everyone, welcome back to Black Girl Couch Reviews. I'm your host, Christina. We are back for another episode of Moon Knight. This is season one, episode four, entitled The Tomb. The episode was written by Alex Minahan and Peter Cameron and Sabir Parzada. Directed by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. It's quite a quite an array of <laughs> behind the scenes on this particular episode. I gave this episode an 8.6 out of 10. I don't know if it's just because I just finished watch, watching two very intense psychological thrillers that coming off of that going into this episode it felt dense in places uh there was a a good reveal that uh mimi was right about i'm sure she was toasting the shit out of herself and the acting was very strong of course i always love seeing the dynamic between steven and mark but going the the first half of this episode just felt very much i don't know i i felt myself getting lost and i am the historian so like i said i'm gonna put it down to my mood but there was some parts where i was just like okay yep this is happening this is happening this is happening all right that scene that's pretty cool loved everything layla was doing loved uh, a great deal of the dialogue of of steven but for some reason i just as the scene was going on i was just like waiting for something else to happen so maybe it was also an expectation thing and then i got to the last 20 minutes and i was confused as fuck because i got heavy legion vibes which i enjoyed but also had me questioning if i was on drugs which i guess impressively is the point because you're just as discombobulated as mark is right now and steven woke up in a sarcophagus (laughs) so let's go ahead and jump into the recap wait before we do so i always forget wherever you're listening to this podcast stitcher itunes spotify podbean jump down to the rating section drop a few stars leave a review my social media will be there as well remember to like share and subscribe and if you want to send feedback on Moon Knight or any of the shows that I'm doing, blackercouch at gmail.com. So Layla is definitely the MVP of this episode, no doubt, right? From acting to just overall being the GOAT and proving Mark absolutely incorrect that she does not need protecting, including from Kanchu. So this whole entire episode was a lesson in his direction they uh, well marcus grant (laughs) i don't know what to call him is unconscious so layla has to roll his body down the sand dunes while being shot at by some of harold's men they circle around she gets behind some cover of their truck she finds flares she's able to distract them because they think that that uh grant is dead and then she's able to because she realizes that they have ammunition in the back of their truck she's able to throw one of the flares in there and explodes killing everybody and that is when grant decides to welcome himself back to the party while also staring in absolute admiration which I absolutely stand behind for Layla. They drive and very quickly get to 
the location of Amit's tomb. Everyone is already inside. There's a conversation on the way between Mark and Stephen, where Stephen's all excited to go on this event adventure, but Mark is telling him to go ahead and give me the body. Whereas Layla starts to support that idea, but then realizes that he would just selfishly want to do this on his own. So declines. Uh, Steven is upset because they had a deal, which he tells her that once Kanshu, the business with Kanshu was done, that Steven could have the body or he would go away. He's like, well, clearly it doesn't work like that. And we're stuck with each other. Uh layla is surprised to hear about the deal because she's like so y'all were just gonna disappear from my life like i didn't have a say in that and steven points out where didn't he disappear from your life already they look around the dig site for supplies because they don't have any and i didn't understand what i was staring at when i saw the thing on the, like the camera panned up to it and i had no clue what the fuck i was looking at and i didn't know why it was important and even after the fact i'm like why did we spend so much time on this <laughs> uh i think the clues were what are they shooting at that was enough i did not need uh, them to to hone in for a good 30 whole seconds on that fucking blade my second complaint it's minor but it it happens maybe it's just me and my tv but it's so fucking dark it is so dark i cannot see anything and that drives me insane i think that's also why i kind of step back just a little bit from the further scenes because i it was just so poorly lit i couldn't see what the fuck was going on half the time I understand we're in the moment and if you were in those caves that's exactly what it would look like so we're in the mind that's awesome aesthetically but it also is bad for people with poor eyesight (laughs) it was just too it was too dimly lit i don't know if anyone else felt the same it also could like i said i'm willing to blame my television Uh, Maybe I need to change the settings, but it was dark. We learned some information about Egyptian culture. Once again, I was tuning that shit all the way out, which is so unlike me. But I did love almost everything that came out of Steven's mouth. It's amazing. It's amazing. He sees a camel and feels the need to greet it. He's walking around just fanboying and he starts to learn some information about Layla. Well, first, while they were in the camp searching for supplies, Steven told him, you look scared. I love that he is kind of like his big brother, which makes me think uh, who's I'm guessing the eldest being um, Jake. Whenever are they really holding out on us with Jake? I feel like we're going to meet Jake very shortly (laughs) and it's probably gonna be what what uh what harrow shouldn't i don't know where we left at this end of this episode i i really don't know what we could get in the next two actually while i'm saying that but mark is kind of like i see you're scared just know you're not alone i'm here Because he was trying to say, you know, it's my body too. I'll just have muscle memory of, he's like, that's just, that's not how it works. (laughs) Not even a little bit. As I stated once again, it's, it's the star of the show is definitely the star of the show. Oscar Isaac. And he says, what you in love? You got a thing for my wife? i knew this was coming i knew it was coming because every time that steven looks at layla the heart eyes are real he tells him if you lay one hand on her i'm gonna throw us off a building <laughs> or off a cliff or something like that 
they get all touchy feely as she's strapping him up so that they can parlay or barlay down relay i don't even know belay that's what it was and he's like what's belay she's like i can't tell if you're joking or not i'm like when it comes to steven he's not joking uh scoozy babbity boopy kick calls huh babbity boopy i love that romantic moment because she's thinking about mark and then she leans in to give a kiss but then he decides i'm gonna tell the truth and mark is trying to protect you from Kanchu, and that's why he's been pushing you away because he deep down secretly still wants to <laughs> support his bro even though he had no problems kissing her himself it was so sloppy and sweet and cute and adorable she then b lays down and makes a signature it's for remembrance of her father we learn more information about him that abdullah was a famous archaeologist and that he died doing the thing that he loved and steven apologizes for that but she's like no it's fine it's fine they find the egyptian priest and then when they go to a room where it looks like someone has been recently sacrificed they realize that they might want to take the exit that doesn't also have a blood trail and they find another exit but unfortunately one of the undead priests comes in they both hide however the priest is able to suss them out is about to attack steven who's screaming like a little girl <laughs> when layla is able to distract it and she's the one that's chased while steven gets away he was all fangirling upstairs as well like what do you see it's amazing there's just bones and skulls and a whole bunch like no one asked you for an inventory motherfucker do you see an exit <laughs> she is then chased to of course the the smallest crevices of stone slab whatever there's a long fucking way down well, to the no to the no 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 hell no no to the no no this is why you won't cast me tomb raiding shit not at all hell i wouldn't even be up in a damn desert it's too goddamn hot <laughs> it's like today i went outside and it was 85 and i was like oh it's, it's uh, i don't like this and my daughter is co-signing like yeah i hate this i melt in the summer heat man i melt so i wouldn't even been on this shit from jump plus i hate sand there or she is then attacked and has to fight off this egyptian priest and she's able to do so resourcefully and she takes a flare to its eyeball you think that she's about to fall off the cliff but she doesn't and she puts herself or pushes herself back up onto the slab and i like the fact that every scene that layla was in danger except the last scene where she had to be <laughs> not listening to reason but to be fair uh harold did his best to put her in a emotional state so i'm not blaming her whatsoever but showing that she doesn't need to be saved at any capacity that she can save herself because in a in a another tv show of course the man would show up and hit the creature on the back of the head and save the day it's like no i took care of myself while grant's over there uh finding himself accidentally because he was like it's gotta be one of the greats nefertiti he is excited to find that Amit's last avatar was one alexander the great he did consider himself egyptian he and his dis well his descendants 
were the Egyptian pharaohs. Cleopatra is Macedonian, which many people kind of forget when they're talking about her. Uh, and is kind of like a great, 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 great granddaughter of Alexander the Great. So it's very apropos. And it's also true no one ever found his tomb that it would be in Egypt. With the help of Mark talking it out, they are able to retrieve the Ushabati from the inside of Alexander's body. We saw one of these earlier when i'm not uh is it i can't remember the name of that guy but he had brought in Kanchu and put him in his final resting place with the other Ushab, uh, ushbati whatever that word so that's a good callback um harrow is watching her or had watched her that scream like i love that I love that when women scream because we do <laughs> and it's not seen as something as hysterical it's just a way to get out a lot of emotion harold says your father would have been proud he then quotes something and apparently the walking stick that he has is able to tell him about people's greatest sin is that what he said i'm pretty sure that's what he said and thus she goes you want to tell me something just say it it involves my husband just tell me what it is because clearly you keep saying he hasn't told you and you do want to tell me let's have it the floor is yours turns out that mark may have been responsible for the death of her father they never found the mercenaries once again it was lined up Heard the last episode this being the reveal and uh she says are you done and he's like wake up and he's like well just because i don't like my husband doesn't mean i would align with your crazy ass <laughs> she called him out earlier she's like that's the thing with all of you people people like you you cannot help but be condescending everything is about your dumb ass and uh you took great joy in ruining people's lives by revealing the worst of and you act like that you're doing them a favor so she goes back she's angry and steven doesn't know what's going on it's kind of like look we we uh we succeeded we beat them we won but layla wants to talk to mark because she wants to know about her father turns out connecting to episode two about those that had executed people that's interesting not only that now i'm thinking about jake once again (laughs) except at the end it feels as if he's telling the truth because he says that the his partner also killed him but I'm wondering once again if that partner is Jake. Because <laughs> I'm like, we ain't heard no mention of a former partner. Because she says, did you kill my father? And he said, no. And she knew he wasn't lying. Then she said, I couldn't stop him. Or he said. What do you mean? And it comes back to that idea of why I didn't want any of this to be true. Because how can you be with someone who killed your father? <laughs> um so i was happy to hear mark say he didn't and then he left me for dead because conchu supposedly came to him when he was at death's door right and then was revived as conchu's avatar but what i am a little confuddled on still is the partner aspect of it i don't want that to be true because i love them together and her falling for steven even more so because he was like and she got herself caught on he was like what a beauty <laughs> and she was like oh oh you're talking about the statue <laughs> so that's like a real damper in their relationship if that is indeed the case 
Harrow uh, arrives with his many men and tells him, look. Now we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. My thing with Harrow, who constantly mentions Kanchu as if it's that ex you can't really get over. He says that when Kanchu left me, there was peace and all this. But if that's the case then why are you what what is the beef there you say he used you manipulated you he's preying on grant so what was it about you that was in that place that made you susceptible to conchu right so where's that line there's a similarity between you two whether you want to acknowledge that or not otherwise the same god would not have uh, pinpointed you as their avatar and I still have a hard time. I think that Kanchu is threatening him with the idea of taking over uh, her as the avatar. But I also feel as if that is an empty threat. Because why would he just all of a sudden... Like that doesn't seem consistent, I guess is my point. So when he says okay and then he takes Alexander's axe and straight up murks the shit out of that dude. We tired of playing with your ass, nigga. Today your ass is gonna die, bitch. Say goodnight, motherfucker. Arthur shoots him twice in the chest. Layla ends up witnessing this. He goes back into the water surrounding Alexander's tomb. And then just as you're getting over this, because I was pretty much at that moment like, huh? <laughs> bitch, what the fuck? What the fuck? All of a sudden, I'm watching this olden day British television series about a knockoff Indiana Jones, but he's Dr. Stephen Grant. And I was like, oh. I was immediately reminded of Legion and this show uh, thus far has been unsimilar to that series although they have a similar premise because uh, this is what ain't he the son of Professor X but he has like multiple he has many personalities and most of what he's what's happening he doesn't know if it's happening in his head or what's reality and fantasy he has a hard time differentiating Plus, there's the idea that supernatural things are actually going on. And it's something that Harold says, like, to Layla, like, your father would be proud to know that actual gods exist in this world. So, he would be proud of her for being the first to expose that. That felt very tangible. So, for them to then flip the script and be like and i could see the part about stephen grant being something as a kid he watched and maybe wanted to emulate that would inspire one of his personas then you have mark mark is like what's going on he doesn't know where stephen is he can't find him he's tied to a a uh, wheelchair because he tries to get up but he's heavily sedated and we see that Stephen as well has been trapped to a bed when he tries to jerk and escape so what is the connection there is Stephen living in the reality that Mark is living in in which an, it's getting fucking bananas and I love it because <laughs> this opens up a whole fucking other can of worms he immediately sees Layla, except Layla is the chick that steals his bingo cards and swears that she's gonna split the prize with him. Then he meets Harrow, but Harrow is his psychiatrist and tells him that he has been having a hard time separating fantasy from reality. He apologizes for sedating him, but tells him it'll wear off. I will say I got a little assaulted by Ethan Hawke's Baby Blues. Oh, sexy girlfriend! He was very dapper without his Koresh hairstyle. Then he says, no, you shot me. He tries to get away. He's able to beat up people still. 
he goes into a room and trapped in a sarcophagus is Stephen. Nothing was more precious in the world than Stephen going Mark and Mark going Stephen and the two hugging. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. He asks uh, Stephen, what's the last thing that you remember? He says, Arthur Harrell shooting us. He's like, good, we got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> He's so happy. He's like, okay, I'm not crazy. I remembered that shit too. They go past a room where a sarcophagus is shaking pretty badly. They don't decide to figure out what the fuck is going on there. But the absolute best scene of the episode in which I had to rewind three times because it was absolutely delectable was when they hear something approaching large to the door and see and are greeted by a huge hippopotamus headed woman what the fuck was that so what i am going to guess right now is that we are in mark steven and whoever else we are in their psyche right now we're in like mark is dying and because it's only two episodes left right the 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 statue he had on his possession or did he give that to layla i think he had that on his possession yep because it pointed right to him he says alone because the other one let he had her left and i'm thinking he thought she left because she would abandon him after that so of course he wouldn't look for her so that made a whole bunch of sense there has to be something that is going to occur in the interim and i believe in the penultimate episode we're going to get to know more about mark and grant and what it's like to be in their head and them blending reality with non-reality it's going to take me a minute to wrap my head around it i'm probably gonna have to listen to like 14 different other podcasts definitely tv podcast industries to get the rundown (laughs) but i thought the last 15 20 15 20 minutes were spectacular and then the last there were a few parts that i really liked about the first part of the episode but i think that was when i was most excited and that is my thoughts on the episode but that is not the end of opinions on this episode we do have feedback so let's hop on in to the mailbag we got a short email from parinthia who says hey queen back at you i had lots to say about this episode but never got around to it so i will just save it for next week but this episode was my favorite thus far can't wait to hear your thoughts on it uh i might disappoint you (laughs) p.s i tried to take a stalker pic of my daughter's preschool teacher our own slice version of oscar isaac girl 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 Oh, you're going to have to get your daughter to ask inappropriate questions about his uh, his personal life, particularly his relationship status, because, you know, people want to know. I can't wait to hear your thoughts about how you love this episode, because I, I definitely want to get all the positivity that I may have missed. <laughs> Next up is Queen Shy. Let's uh, hear what she has to say. Hey Christina, it's me, Shy. I am here to give my feedback for Moon Knight episode four. There was a lot going on in this episode. I enjoyed this episode, but it was very busy. <laughs> um, this turned into almost like a horror film, and you know how I feel about that. Well, let's start out by um, we picked up where we left off in the last episode. Um, Kanju is gone, and mark slash steven is 
unconscious and Layla's trying to wake him up and then we get some some people that are shooting at them they try to escape uh I just find it <laughs> uh, yeah th- those types of things I just laugh at because it's like you know it's it's so so <laughs> anyway I'm just gonna move on um then uh so they're they're trying to move on to uh go to the site where um to head off author and his crew um and so steven i mean mark that is is trying to get out because they think that he needs to be the one that's in control in order to figure out what's going on in this pyramid but per usual steven is not about that life again and so um yeah and uh, here's my thing. Um, <laughs> maybe it's the black person in me. I don't, or maybe it's the military person in me. But I'm just not. Or maybe it's the scaredy cat in me. <laughs> but I'm not going to no empty campsite where you see blood. And you know people were there. And that, yeah, let me go down into this cave. And, and I know they're doing it for a cause. They're trying to find this thing before Arthur does. But I'm just I'm just not that person, I guess. <laughs> Which is very ironic for me to say. I mean, going into creepy, creepy caves and just no, no, I, I can't. And so, yeah. But anyway, I thought it was funny that <laughs> Mark was telling uh, Stephen not to mess with Layla and... He ends up, I mean, he, it was nice of him to give Layla a, you know, a reason um, to, you know, for why Mark was acting the way he did. But then he turned around and kissed her, which Stephen, I mean, Mark did not appreciate. And so he punched himself. <laughs> I always think it's funny when he's like threatening. It's like, you know, you're basically threatening to kill yourself when you threaten to kill Stephen. But OK, <laughs> and he acknowledged that. I just think it's funny how they argue with each other and go there um so yeah they go inside the creepy cave and then another funny moment was when steven was like oh look at you and layla was thought she was he was talking about her but he was looking at the walls and all the stuff that was going on there and so they continue on their way to find this yushibi is yushidi is yushibdi whatever this thing is called um yeah and then we get the gross scene of blood and guts all over this table this sacrificial table i'm like what is up with these shows having sacrificial tables um and in this case there's some creepy creature dude that brought dragged some person in there and gutted him out putting the um uh putting the innards in jars and i'm like oh, okay um i'm not gonna lie I, i'm not i didn't watch it i mean i turned my head away i but i did see him put some, <laughs> something in the jar i don't know what it was I ain't trying to know and then of course you know you got layla you know i'm like just just don't move layla just don't move but of course she moved and of course she knocked over something made some noise and then things got crazy from there so but my thing is Steven were you trying to like were you just sitting there screaming and hollering because you didn't want to leave Layla or what because you had the door to run through just say run and go while every he was distracted but um he did uh manage to uh slow him down slow it down I should say as they escaped um we have Layla who um You know, again, another moment where I'm like, I'm just going to die. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't be in that cave. If I was in that cave, I'm this is where I'm going to die then, because there's no way in hell I would. I mean, we talked about my fears um, and this is one of them. Heights. No, it's not happening. I would be paralyzed. I would not be able to move. I know my life is on the line and I would like to think that I would do something and I would move and I would get to where I'm going. But. I'm, I don't know. I, I mean, this is one of those moments where I would have to question myself, would have to look myself in the mirror somewhere 
and and it'd be a defining moment <laughs> but as it stands right now um from the outside looking in no i'm I'm not about that life um so yeah we <laughs> but she, luckily layla's not me so she's hopping and skipping on these rocks that these barely bare ledges and um then there's the next moment that scared the shit out of me and i'm like nope 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 <laughs> When the creature grabbed her twice, I'm like, seriously? Then she comes out with a pe- <laughs> with his arm. And so they go to town. I'm like, okay. All right. So that happened. And then uh, she finally got the best of him and threw him over the ledge. But then she goes over. And I'm thinking to myself, she got some strong damn hands, some strong damn fingers for her to be able to hold on while the thing um, went over. Because there's no way that was an I was also be gone. Um, so RIP me several times in this episode. Um, and then we got author telling we getting some answers finally of some past stuff. So we got author telling um, Layla about what happened to her dad. So even though Stephen, I'm, I'm okay, Mark didn't kill the, her father, he was he was part of the the crew that. Uh, was the reason why her her um, father ended up being killed because he was a mercenary and they went there to do something and her father and their and that dig site got caught in the crossfire. So there's that and I'm thinking this is where uh, Mark died and then this whole Conshu thing came to be uh, with that relationship. You know, I was like, when she confronted um, Steven slash Mark, I was like, this is never, definitely not the, I'm with Mark. This is not the time to be discussing this. Uh, we got uh, things, uh, you know, more uh, pressing things going on. But, you know, the emotions are high, so I get it. I did, I forgot this one part. I did think it was funny where Steven was like, let's not go where the blood and the bones are. <laughs> let's go in another direction. I'm like, thank you, Steven. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Let's not go in that direction where you clearly see a blood trail. Arthur finally catches up to him and then we see Steven get shot. But I'm not quite sure, you know, this should be a deadly, deadly wound that (laughs) that he suffered. But uh, this we're only episode four. So obviously he's not dead. Then we get, you know, put put in another where he's in a uh, mental institution so I'm like, okay, um, so we see Mark there and then we find out later that his personalities are locked away in these little tomb things. Um, so I know there, they have, there's a certain name for him. Don't know what it is. Um, but, but we do see him rescue Steven. And so my question becomes, I mean, I'm sure one of the other tomb had one of his other personalities in it. Um, well, don't know which one that is. And I'm wondering if those other rooms had his other personalities in it. We just didn't get to see them. Um, and so that's going to be interesting going forward. So or is this inside? Cause he, um, Arthur was saying that this is a psychiatric world, psychotic, psych, even, you know, psych, psych, psychotic world. So is this all in his mind? Um, that his, there's another personality out there doing whatever. And while they're, they're in his mind now, Mark's mind. So that's my question. And then of course, my other question is who the hell is that hippo? <laughs> uh, Mark and Steven both cracked me up, mostly Steven and his reaction screaming at the hippo. And that voice was definitely unexpected. So left uh we got two episodes of this bad boy left so i'm very excited to delve into some more hoping to get a little bit more backstory um as we uh finish off the season until next time much love peace and black girl magic queen of the couch shy that was queen shy with her thoughts on the episode so uh very good catch on the personalities being in the sarcophagus that that makes a whole lot of sense and they went past the third one like yeah we're not addressing that yet (laughs) but clearly they're making it known there are differing person personalities personas going on around here 
and I don't know how that's gonna swerve but I know it's gotta swerve somehow I feel like we've seen you know what I feel like we've seen those hi uh, hippos because there were things that were it seemed to be familiar in Steven's life and I felt like I saw those at the museum because I was thinking at the time who the fuck sells hippopotamuses in a museum like, that's so random why wouldn't you st sell stuff teddy bear dinosaurs but I could also be totally mistaken it could have been a dolphin <laughs> or a whale and I'm mis misremembering that um there was something else that i was like oh wait oh donna was there donna was there that's what i meant to uh, pick up um donna was there at the facility so it seems to be people that are things there was the one guy that was there that uh the the one they killed in the last episode so there it seems to be uh, yeah i think it's definitely in his mind right and he he went into the recesses of his mind how he's possibly gonna get healed i don't know my guess is that goddess that's on his side because he does have friends is gonna help him out but that's just a a, a a just a surmising thing from me um i'm with you though i would never be jumping through them ledges nope the minute i would have saw that i'm like just kill me i'm done I mean, I felt, I feel like I will just go ahead and try to fight, but at the same time, but that's what I mean. We won't have to ask these questions because we would have never went down there in the first damn place. So it's really hard to judge how you react on a situation you would never be in. Uh, I, I, I laughed several times how you were kept saying, basically, you know, that, that meme It's like, it's not realistic. That's basically what I have heard you saying <laughs> when you were like that scene in the beginning. That was extra. Uh, she must have some strength. <laughs> the side dragon. I love it. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping for more answers too. But I have a feeling next episode is going to be very interesting, and it's going to need to tell Mark and both Stephen what the fuck is going on particularly in his own mind last but not least we have feedback from queen mimi so let's hear her take on this episode what up stina this is mimi this is feedback from moon Knight, season one episode four now you got to bear with me i watched this episode in three parts because i just couldn't get my mind right during the days that i had off so when I realized that I didn't rewatch the Moon Knight and it was on the calendar, I had already had to go to work. So I had to watch 30 minutes on my lunch break. Then I woke up and I had to get a bunch of errands done. So I watched 20 minutes and then I watched the last 10 minutes. So it took me through two and a half days to watch this. And it was really good. So it was bothering me that I couldn't watch it. Um... Tonight I could have watched it though because I was my shift was pretty chill. Could have watched the whole thing, but we're not gonna dwell on that. Um, I am just gonna send what I remember. I remember at the beginning of the episode, it was like I remember. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with the characters. So let's start with Layla. I fucking love her. She is a boss bitch. If I have ever seen one like I can't even tell you how much I admire her I love how she fights I love how way her mind works I love how she like confronted um Mark about her father she didn't like she she didn't like react like I feel like the typical female girlfriend ish kind of character that feels betrayed act ex she listened to him she heard him out um and then when shit hit the fan like she didn't act like you know she all of a sudden hated him you know she still has feelings for him she realized that you know he did have if, if it wasn't for him bringing criminals around her father maybe her father would still be alive and the only reason that she even met him met mark was because he felt guilty about getting her father killed um, and all of that is enough to make a person, especially happening all at once, all this information coming at you, make people act not irrationally, but they just have such strong emotions that 
you know, if anything bad happens, it will like be catastrophe because your mind ain't even like ready to comprehend what is happening around you. She was pissed off at Mark, but she was still able to, you know, hide and let things happen, you know, where she didn't get herself caught. Um, I, I like I when I watched the episode and we were like they were in that the tomb looking for King Henry. I didn't know. Henry the Eighth. Alexander the Great. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was Alexander the Great. I didn't realize he was Egyptian. So the fact that he was in a tomb and, you know, in a pharaoh's tomb and was mummified, really, I'm not going to lie, I was shook it. Wasn't expecting that. Um, but um, that little, clearly Harold, is his name Harold? I don't know. I am so... I'm so tired. I have no idea what I don't remember anybody's name, but he was like clearly the the mastermind behind this brought that mummy back to life. I, I don't know what he was doing, but he was like gutting people and putting their entrails and like clearly he was the person that mummified everyone. I don't know how he has the power to bring back the dead. It just seems like if this um Egyptian goddess that you want everybody to worship punishes the guilty you know before they actually do anything how are you doing all of everything that you're doing and getting away with it aren't you wreaking a lot of havoc but somehow you're not being punished I I'm not quite understanding that so I'm just confused on how he's allowed to go around just murking people waking up ancient evil and unleashing it on the world and that's fine but other people you know the future me is gonna do something terrible so now I gotta die it makes absolutely no sense to me but I just don't understand what his end game is clearly he wants these Egyptian goddess and goddesses to be free roam free punish the guilty before you do anything or whatever the case is he wants that they're they're called egyptian queens right egyptian goddesses i don't know this is gonna be the worst feedback ever because i'm so freaking tired and i'm like three seconds from passing out um harold i'm just gonna call him harold because i cannot remember his name and i can't even think too hard on it but that creature just running around murking people <laughs> and the way Layla like fought him off like I don't know how I would have I would have been petrified because that thing even though like the screen when I was I was re watching it on my phone and my screen was really dark I couldn't even see all of it but just the clicking sounds it was making the way it was moving terrifying terrifying but she kicked his ass even when his arm broke off she didn't get disgusted she just kept fighting she's like I said Layla is a boss bitch I love her now let's talk about my man's um Steven and uh, Mark. Their <laughs> back and forth had me laughing so hard. Um that last scene <laughs> the both of them together, I laughed so loud in that break room at my job, <laughs> straight up cackling. It was so funny. Um so I have like I gotta be honest, like okay, so I thought we were going to see finally who this third um, personality was when he was confronted with all of those people trying to kill him with the gun and then he got shot and then we're in like a psych facility and I'm like what the fuck is happening like I'm like literally looking around like I'm so confused am I watching the same show like what is happening and I'm like okay no this is just a dream he's you know he's losing a lot of blood his mind is going maybe this is what happens when one of the other personalities take over um or i should say not one of the personalities when this third personality take over and everybody's all confused and they like time blinks maybe they go into this white room and you know there's cupcakes on a trolley like that's a trolley like that's fucking awesome i've been in i've i've worked in a mental health facility <laughs> I've never seen cupcakes that look that delicious just in general, let alone like someone pushing around on a trolley. You know, I was like, this is clearly a dream and it's awesome. 
and then Layla was there and then we see the Stephen Grant uh archaeologist like Indiana Jones but like more bootleg I was like okay clearly this is a dream but then it keeps going and then it seems more real and I'm like what the fuck is happening this could not have been all in his head like what is happening and then we see um him talking to Harold and he's like I feel like that's not his name I can't even remember the actor's name right now I don't know so he's talking to the villain and the villain is like oh yeah you're making this up in your mind you know you think it's real but you know you you know you've led a rough life and this is your way of coping blah 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 blah. and then Mark is like you shot me <laughs> I'm like oh crap yes he did shoot you where is our third personality he should have jumped out by now i was like okay we're gonna we're gonna flash back to them in real the real world and they're gonna he's gonna like the third personality is gonna be kicking people's ass that didn't happen he like beats the shit out of the the orderlies and then he breaks away and starts running and goes into a room and here's a tomb and he's like beating on it he opens the tomb boom steven steven grant comes out and he's like what happened he's like i got shot it's like yes i knew it and then they start running and then we see a third tomb um sarcophagus i don't it's not called a tomb i've been saying the wrong word sarcophagus and it's banging i'm like oh that's the third personality let them out but they don't let them out they just run past the room and then they get stopped by a giant ass hippopotamus with braids box braids and like the little egyptian little headpiece and then it talks <laughs> like hi and then they both scream cackling it was hilarious hilarious don't know what to expect have no theories but episode was awesome and since i'm extremely tired i don't have nothing else to say i can't think of anything i'm gonna end it here sorry i know this was a hot mess my mind is jumbled crap but i just wanted to get this out so can't wait to hear the review and what everyone has to say about this episode fill me in because i'm confused but i liked it <laughs> until next time love peace hair grease black girl magic queen of the couch mimi out that was queen mimi with her thoughts on the episode i know she tired because that was under 10 minutes oh no he didn't uh and it didn't even have time to celebrate her win for predicting correctly the the turn so yeah i understand trying to remember arthur's name is not i always want to call him ethan hawk alexander is macedonian but he loved egypt and egyptian culture he tried to get people yeah no he's all about that and then he kind of inspired the pharaohs all up until the black pharaohs and those are the ones that were actually black there were pre macedonian pharaohs as well that were also black or of dark brown or black descent <laughs> or skinned is right they're egyptian uh but egypt is in africa so you know that sun is real uh i don't have much to add i think uh the only p- other part is the fact that i don't think he was in a dream i think he's in his subconscious you know kind of like a a a self i don't know mechanism or a mental mechanism to help you cope with trauma i'm not sure like he should be dead but clearly he's not going to be dead so something's gonna happen in between but i think next episode i have a feeling we're gonna spend in his mind and all of these weird things like the like the cupcakes didn't he go and get some cupcakes and then the goldfish all of this is from his own subconscious so i think that he's gonna find a way for them to figure out and then let out the other personality (laughs) to handle the harold situation i have a feeling that arthur might take homegirl hostage because it ain't gonna take much to find her or she'll be sleuthing around and then she'll witness the true brutality of that third persona and then she might have to question whether or not steven's worth it he is but (laughs) she might be done with mark and you're right though i I have a lot of admiration for how they've done the layla character as well Uh, they made her competent rational 
you know, understanding. And she she heard him out, heard what he said. Her feelings didn't all of a sudden. She didn't have disgust for him. She she wondered if he killed this. Like, I, please don't kill. That's why I don't want that to be. Like, I really want this to be the story. And it feels a little dark for Disney, but you always you know i'm already i'm already down for the darkness but at the same time i don't want that to be the case because i don't want that to be the end because that would have to be the end right if you actually put your hands on my father and murdered him so i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna err on the side of this other person that only comes out in the most extreme circumstances and this wasn't it and it really was a partner and like she said you did bring criminals around my father but also you have to ask yourself why did the father get involved with people like i'm sure with all of his fame he would have had the capacity to do background checks so there's also some culpability or maybe some other things that could be discovered down the line because every time you put someone on a pedestal you always find out they weren't quite the hero you imagined them to be Especially if they found themselves at the end of their life in the muck, even though they show as hell did not deserve to be to be murdered. So that is the end of our feedback for this episode. If you want to send feedback for our next episode, blackercouch at gmail.com. Oh, I'm glad you also brought up the fact that it was dark. Uh, my social media will be below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace, hair grease, and blacker magic.